Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dan and welcome back to my kitchen for another unboxing and review video. Today, I'm going to be unboxing the Anycubic Photon P1 resin 3D printer. First resin printer that I ever got was the Anycubic Photon S and I still have it. The Photon P1 looks pretty interesting and I'm ready to try it out. So let's unbox it, shall we? This was extremely simple and took maybe two minutes to take out of the box. There really isn't any setup work that needs to be done other than putting the build plate on and removing some screen protectors. Here she is. This is the Anycubic Photon S and this is the Anycubic Photon P1. It's really cool to see how times have changed. I am very excited to try this guy out and uh, finally throw this one away. I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy over to the print room and start some resin prints. So a quick overview on the Photon P1. The printer's touchscreen and interface is extremely simple to use. You can quickly navigate to different settings and everything is easily accessible. This printer is also capable of multi-material printing. While I only have a single build plate, the Photon P1 offers a dual build plate option that can be paired with a specific vat to print two materials simultaneously in one print. The printer also comes with a heated vat. The connection point is located on the top left corner of the resin vat and it automatically connects when the vat is placed on the printer. This keeps the resin at an optimal temperature when printing and can change the temperature depending on the resin that you're using. It's built into the resin vat and ready to go without any additional parts. The printer also has an intelligent leveling system that is ready to use right out of the box. The printer checks the level before each print and will maintain that level throughout the entire print. You can also manually calibrate the level if needed by adjusting the four screws that are located where the build plate connects. The Smart Assistant 3.0 monitors resin levels, detects residue, and identifies any dropped parts during printing. There is also a camera that is located on the back of the printer that can detect any abnormalities or failures during the printing process. The printer itself costs $799. However, if you join the Kickstarter, it costs $499. This printer is estimated to be shipped in January of 2026 with an estimated delivery of February of 2026. The max marking line has also been adjusted. The scale line has been lowered to make it safer and easier to pour resin. Lastly, Anycubic has announced that they'll be updating the UV cover design to provide stronger UV isolation. After moving the printer, I turned it on for the first time. The power button is located on the side of the touchscreen. I then went through the setup procedure of selecting the language, homing, calibration, installing the resin vat, and then pouring in Anycubic's high clear resin into the vat. After connecting the printer to Wi-Fi, you can use the Anycubic app to pair the device to your Anycubic workbench. The machine doesn't require leveling immediately, however I decided to do it to see how it worked. Once I selected assisted leveling, it began the procedure. The build plate must be installed and the resin vat must be removed. It will then lower onto the UV screen and show you whether to loosen or tighten the four bolts located on the build plate bracket. Turning the bolt clockwise tightens it and counterclockwise loosens it. After getting each corner to below 100, it was ready to print. The slicing software can be installed from the included USB or downloaded from the Anycubic website. After installing it on your computer and selecting Workbench in the top, you'll see your paired device. If you haven't paired it, you can select Add Printer and it will search for local printers nearby. Once connected, I dropped in a calibration matrix test file. After rotating the model for the best resin printing orientation, I added the support automatically. You can also manually edit supports and place additional ones if you need more support material on the piece. Before slicing, I had to change the resin. On the right hand side, I clicked and selected the High Clear resin. After slicing the part, I then clicked Remote Print and selected the three options for better resin printing performance. After sending it to the printer, it started the print. After about two hours, the print was done. It popped right off the build plate with almost no effort. It was so clear, it was a little hard to see all the details at first. After washing it off with IPA, the supports came off easily. You can still see the dimpling from the support points, which is totally expected, but the part itself was paper thin and captured every bit of detail. Once cured, the resin turned a bit foggy, which is normal for clear resin, but it still looked fantastic. The piece remained flexible and you can clearly see all the tiny details and even the fine text that had been printed. After my initial testing passed perfectly, I decided to test a large print. I found this Mewtwo statue on printables and thought it'd be great for the clear resin. I dropped the files into the slicer and scaled all the parts up to max. After orienting and adding supports, I sliced the files and sent it to the printer. I checked on it the next day, and it failed. Which I think was my doing? I wasn't sure if I sliced it wrong or because I literally made it 100% solid resin so it was a little bit too heavy? I don't know. I still wanted my Mewtwo statue though so I scaled it down about 25% and sent it back to the printer. A few hours later it printed perfectly. 
I removed them from the build plate and then tossed it into an IPA bath to be cleaned. The base also printed just fine with no issues and looked great. Popping the supports off was easy and I had to use my snips to get them cleaned, but it was a little hard to see some of the attachment points because it was clear. Even though it was a little foggy, all the parts looked fantastic. After curing under the UV light, the parts looked amazing. They weren't perfectly clear straight out of the curing booth, but that's totally expected and something that can be easily fixed with a bit of post-processing and a clear coat. The printer handled the curves on the figure extremely well, the surfaces were really smooth, and the overall quality genuinely impressed me. I decided to switch the resin over to Anycubic Standard Resin Plus, so I removed the vat and poured the remaining clear resin back into the bottle. To keep things clean, I used this 3D printed filter funnel holder I grabbed from Printables, which made the whole process super easy and mess free. Once everything was cleaned out, I poured the new resin into the vat. In the slicer, I updated the resin profile to match and then ran the calibration matrix again. And about an hour and a half later, the print finished successfully. The part popped right off the build plate, and I may have been a little too aggressive removing the supports, as you can probably tell, but even then, it still looks phenomenal. There are no visible layer lines, the text is perfectly legible, and all the fine details came through really clean. With the calibration matrix out of the way, I wanted to go even bigger than Mewtwo, but not too big. I found this sick juggernaut statue and spent way more time than I'd like to admit orienting all the parts in the slicer. Printing parts solid is a huge waste of resin, so I hollowed everything out directly in the slicer. You also need to add drainage holes so resin can flow out and it doesn't get trapped inside, which is quick and easy to do in the slicer as well. Once everything was oriented and supported, I sliced all the files and then sent them off to be printed. I managed to fit his entire body on one build plate and the base on a second. Both prints came off the build plate without too much hassle. After cleaning, I spent a deep decent amount of time removing all the supports. There were a lot of them, and they were pretty tiny. Once that was done, I UV cured all the parts. The base had a slight warp to it, but a bit of sanding fixed that easily. Other than that, everything turned out great. I was very impressed with how well it printed the size of this statue. The printer captured all the small details incredibly well, and the final result looks fantastic. I swapped the resin out for Anycubic's plant-based resin. After cleaning the vat, I poured it in and updated the resin profile in the slicer. I ran another calibration matrix and it printed perfectly. The white resin actually looked really cool. The resolution was sharp and it captured all the details flawlessly. Juggernaut was big, but he was only 1 9th scale, and I wanted a 1 6th scale. Fractions. So I picked this Dead Space statue from the same modeler. The parts themselves were massive, so I split his body between two plates. The torso, waist, helmet, and tool went onto one plate, and his arms and legs went on the other. Both printed perfectly and took under eight hours each. The resin really stuck to the build plate, but I managed to pop the parts off without too much trouble. Everything looked fantastic. After an IPA bath, I spent a while removing all the supports. It wasn't difficult, but some of the supports also connected into the drainage holes, so a few spots were a little tricky. There were also these tiny little supports that were a little difficult to find. Once everything was support-free, I put all the pieces into the UV curing station. Fun fact, too much UV light can burn your parts. Nothing serious, it just gave it this golden brown toasted marshmallow look. But the parts themselves looked great, and everything fit together easily with no issues. I was extremely impressed with how well it came out. Everything looked fantastic, and the quality of all the details looked insane. And you're probably wondering, Dan, aren't you going to print the base? I'd already used 800 milliliters of the plant-based resin. Which brings us to the next resin I tested. After cleaning the vat, I poured in the High Speed Resin 2.0 and updated the resin profile in the slicer. You'll notice the High Speed Resin offers two options, normal and fast. The normal setting prints at 0.05mm layer height and takes just under 2 hours, while the fast option prints at 0.1mm layer height and finishes in only 47 minutes. The calibration matrix printed impressively fast and looked just as good as the others. I was able to fit the entire base of the Isaac Clarke statue onto a single build plate. After sending it to the printer, it was finished in just over 7 hours. Removing it from the build plate was easy, and after washing it, I started removing the supports. I did my best with the orientation, but there was a lot of support material. Still, it didn't take too long to clean up, and the result looked amazing. And for the size, the print captured all the details perfectly. After UV curing, you can see some support scarring on the backside, but that could be sanded down or fixed with better orientation. Once the figure was added to the base, it looked incredible. I was genuinely in awe of how good it turned out. For the size and speed, the quality was outstanding. The entire statue took less than 24 hours to print, and every detail came out beautifully. Considering how complex the model is, the printer handled it exceptionally well. 
And now it is time for my thoughts on this printer. I'm not that experienced with resin as I mainly use FDM for almost everything that I build. However, this was a very simple machine and I really did enjoy using it. I did have that one failure at the very beginning, but I think that was more of a user failure than anything else. Everything that I've printed since then has come out amazing. I did experience very minimal warping, but that could have been solved with better support placement and proper orientation. The slicer itself was very simple to use and extremely fast. It made the entire process of slicing and sending parts quick and easy. The machine itself is built very well and feels really solid. I'm very impressed with its overall build quality and the level of detail that it's able to capture in the prints. All in all, I've really enjoyed this printer and I think it's capable of printing anything that you need it to. I want to give a big thank you to Anycubit for sending me this printer and giving me the opportunity to try it out. Also, thank you guys for watching this video. All of the links for everything in this video will be in the description below. I'll see you in the next one.